What is up everybody and welcome to another Java tutorial. I'm Andrew with Uni Programmer, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the interface. So you can think of the interface as another abstract level past the abstract class. So first we started with the concrete class, and then we had the abstract class, and then now we have the interface. So the interface is purely abstract. You do not implement any details, not even variables. The only thing that you include in an interface is going to be the method signatures. So here I have the abstract pet class that we were working with before, and I'm going to turn this into an interface. So we don't implement details, so we, need to, we don't need to include variables. We don't need a constructor, since we can't instantiate an interface. All we need are method signatures. So set name, we're going to get rid of that. I just want to be able to get. And then set age, we can get rid of that. And then the bodies of the methods. All we want to leave is the method signatures. And it's no longer abstract or class, abstract class. So we just use the keyword interface. So now this is an interface. You cannot instantiate it. It's basically just an, a very incomplete outline. There's no variables like the abstract class. It's purely abstract. These right here are like those promises that we talked about for the methods. It's just saying you need to perform these methods. And as long as you get that done in a way that makes sense with whatever in or whatever implements this interface, then that is okay. You just need to be able to perform whatever methods I have in the interface. All right, so let's move on to the dog class. So the keyword, when you want to use an interface, it's implements. And then whatever your interface is. So public class dog implements pet. And you can see we're underlined here. So we need to add the unimplemented methods. And right here, it's going to be those methods that we promised that we will have. And you'll notice you don't need to actually have abstract in here because an interface is purely abstract. So it goes without saying that these are abstract. OK, so let's start filling these out. Now you'll notice that we do need to include variables in a class that implements your interface. And that's what's nice about an interface is because unlike the abstract class, that already comes somewhat filled out. Some things are done, some is left out. But with the interface, it's completely up to whatever implements the interface to fill those things out. So it's actually it can be really nice because then you're not halfway started on something you can finish it entirely. OK, so we need to be able to get name, which returns a string, get age, which returns an integer, and then speak, which is void, and it speaks like whatever the animal is that implements the pet, so a dog. So what we're going to need, if we need to be able to get name, then we're going to need a string called name. and get age that returns an int. So we'll just have an int age. Simple enough. And then we just need to have a constructor so we can set those. So we'll pass in a name, pass in the age, the integer, and then set those. Now we have our constructor. Now we need to fill out the methods that we promised that we'll include. And you can see it's an override, because it has to be an override, because the interface is purely abstract. So whatever it is has to be an override. So for get name that returns a string, that's simple. We just want to have it return this.name. 
simple enough. That'll return a string that is the name. So we're doing what the method requires. And then we have int called get age. Same thing, return this dot age. All right, so that does what that method is supposed to do. And then we have a speak method that a dog needs to perform. So we will just do what we did before and we'll have this dot name plus uh, said bark. All right, so it'll get the name and then said bark. Okay, so now we have our dog class that implements that interface pet. We had to include the variables, a constructor that set those variables, and then we had those three method signatures that we had to fill out. Now we'll look at the cat, which is going to be very similar. So we have public class cat, and same thing, you need to use the keyword implements, our interface pet. We're going to need a name and an age, and then our constructor. And then we'll just set those. And we need to add our methods, our unimplemented methods. And those are those method signatures from the interface. And anything that implements these methods or this interface with these methods, they need to perform these methods in such a way that makes sense for whatever class implements that interface. So a cat is going to have to perform this a little bit different. So the get name, this is simple because we just returned that. And age, simple. And then the speak method has to perform like a cat would. So we will get the name again. And we'll just have it say meow. So a cat will do it different. And you'll notice they're all override because the pet is an interface and all of these are abstract. So they all have to be override because you must fill out those methods for each one. And then right here, I have another class and it's going to be called crazy pet. And this one is also going to implement pet. Our, our interface. And to show you an example, I'm going to use this and I'm going to have it do all of these methods in a different way. So what I'm going to have it do, since it's a crazy pet, I'm going to have it randomly do things. So first, let's go ahead and import um, our random and we need a random object okay so the first thing is get name now this method needs to return a string that's a name of whatever that object is so it must make sense that it returns a name, just like this returns an int, that's an age. We want it to perform like it's supposed to. But since it's a crazy pet, it's gonna do something a little crazy. So let's make a string variable in here and just set it to an empty string. And then what we're gonna do is have it just create a random set of characters. So I'm gonna do it like this, character array, cares, equals, and then in here, it's just going to be our random set of characters. And then an easy way to put these two in an array is 
use the method to character array. So now we have a random set of characters here and then we put them all in an array. And what that's gonna do is take each character and then put it in order in an array. Now let's go through it and put our string together. So we need a for loop. We'll just do five letters. And in this for loop, we will just have it concatenate with our name here. So name plus equals cares. We're gonna call our array here. And then inside of it, we are just gonna have it randomly select one of the characters in that. So now it'll go through with the length of five and go into our character array and concatenate our string name with random characters. And then we'll just have it return name. So we completed that method and it returns a string name, but it's a random name each time. Each time we call it, it's gonna be a random name. And now we need to have a method called getAge that returns an integer that's an age. But since it's a crazy pet, we will just have it return a random number from zero up to 100. And lastly, we just need our speak method. And let's see. We're going to have it create something random again. And I'm just going to copy that. We'll say text. And what we're going to have it do is just randomly select letters or characters and put them together in a string. And we'll do it 10 letters long. And then after it does that, we'll have it display um, this.getName. Said text. All right. So we have all three methods of our crazy pet filled out. And you can see we didn't actually create any variables in this. Like with this, we did. And with the dog, we had the variables. But with the crazy pet, we didn't actually instantiate any variables. And that's because the interface, using the interface gives you freedom to do the methods however you want to do them, however you need to do them to, to make, uh, make it make sense for the class that implements that method or that interface. So let's go ahead and instantiate the objects and call it. So we already have the dog and the cat. Now we need the crazy pet. We'll call our methods, the speak methods of all. Oops. My dog dot speak, my cat dot speak, and then also our crazy pet dot speak. We'll run that. And you can see it says Spike said bark, Fluffy said meow, and then some random name said some random thing. <laughs> Okay, now we will have, let's just use the other methods too. So system.out, just so we know what it is, this is gonna be for the pet, crazy pet, dot get name. And let's get the age.
run it, and you can see it comes up with a random name and returns a random number, and it does that every single time, whereas these stay the same. All right, that's the interface. I'll go over it one more time. So you have your keyword interface, that's important. And remember, you don't actually implement details in the interface. You just include the method signatures, which are basically promises that if you do implement this interface, you must fill these out. Use the implements keyword, and then um, you implement the interface. You include variables if you need to, to perform whatever methods you're gonna have. And then you include your override which Eclipse does for you. And the crazy pet. This is just to show you that you can perform your methods in any way that makes sense. So if it's a crazy pet, it's gonna return a random name, a random na an age, and it's gonna say something random. And I didn't even need to include variables for that. I just had the variables in the methods, just local variables. All right, I hope that makes sense for the interface, and I will see you in the next video.